What is PCOS? This video is PCOS explained by an OBGYN, an integrated medicine doctor, and mom of four. So you know if we're going to talk about this, I'm going to break out the drawing board because I have four kids and that's what I do. So let's talk about PCOS. You have to be patient with my drawing because unfortunately I am not an artist. <laughs> I went to medical school. So this is my lovely woman with her brain. These are the cells in your body, the adrenal glands and the ovary. Okay. So PCOS is called polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's called a syndrome because basically there is no one cause for PCOS. No one really knows what the cause is. There's theories as to why someone develops PCOS, but we really don't know the exact cause of PCOS. The word syndrome is essentially assigned to it because you have to exclude everything else. It's not like you take one test and go, okay, I have PCOS. So the word syndrome in medicine is typically referred to when you have to exclude everything else. And then you kind of lump people into this particular diagnosis. So polycystic ovarian syndrome, some people would argue it should be called poly, poly follicular syndrome because it's really about the follicles in the ovary and not cyst per se. So PCOS. What is it? So essentially on a normal cycle, normal menstrual cycle, that's 28 to 35 days, the brain releases a chemical. Let's grab a little lovely pen. So the brain releases a chemical that tells the ovaries what to do. So that is FSH. It's a hormone that says you should recruit eggs and start recruiting eggs. And then one of them will eventually become the dominant follicle. And that dominant follicle will then ovulate or leave the ovary. And once it leaves the ovary, then essentially you have a potential to get pregnant. If you don't get pregnant, then the body says back to the brain, let's do this thing over and over again, right? Every 28 to 35 days, somewhere around there. Um, and so it's a, a um, you know, a, a hormone tells the ovaries what to do. And then a, a feedback loop says, okay, we didn't get pregnant. Let's move on. Let's do this thing again. Well, with PCOS, what's so different is that it's not a direct route. It's not actually that your brain releases this chemical and says, let's tell the ovaries what to do. Well, there's the ratio of this hormone is off. And so oftentimes it actually kind of takes a long time, an indirect route to get to the ovary. This can be why, this is part of the reason, and not all of the reason, but part of the reason why people have cycles that with PCOS that can be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, hopefully not longer than that, but it has been known that people have had cycles or once a year with PCOS. Um, it has this very weird journey because it gets derailed by the fact that there is higher levels of androgens in the body, which mess up this feedback loop back to the brain. And so essentially what happens, and this high levels of androgens are really from a couple of things. One, the ovary, if the egg does not release, um, this follicle here is making excess and androgens in the ovary. So that contributes to the problem. The adrenal glands also are making excess androgens. And that's usually because of there's high levels of cortisol. And the cells in your body have higher levels of insulin. And that feeds back to this androgen loop. So instead of your body going, oh, we didn't get pregnant, let's go ahead and move on to the next cycle. These excess androgens are messing up that signal going back to the brain, which then messes up the signal as well going to the ovary. And so when we talk about PCOS and I talk about the causes and trying to find your root cause of PCOS, the reason why I'm doing that is because we're trying to, I figure out, do you have higher levels of inflammation? Do you have higher levels of insulin or insulin resistance? Is it an ovary issue? Is it really a sex uh, hormone issue? Like what component of your PCOS is driving your symptoms? Typically the symptoms of PCOS are related to these higher androgen levels. Um, so hair loss or thinning of the top of the hair, um, acne, not ovulating this higher levels of androgen feeds back to the ovary and tells the ovary, let's not release that egg that you need to. So they have women with PCOS have infertility. Um, it often also leads to symptoms of weight gain because of this insulin resistance. So all those symptoms that you typically know about related to PCOS 
are mostly related to this higher level of androgens. That's why it's part of the diagnosis um, for PCOS in the Rotterdam criteria, but also the Androgen Excess Society, also um, it's higher levels of androgens. So essentially that's the, that's the difficult part of treating PCOS as well, um, which we'll talk about in another video, but it certainly makes it more difficult when you're trying to see all these little pieces that you have to essentially treat and which way is the right way. It really depends on the woman, it depends on her symptoms. It depends on her ratio of insulin resistance, inflammation, is it an ovary issue? Like what is it that we're treating? That's why the one size fits all approach doesn't work in my opinion. And we try to tailor it specifically for your body. So I hope you can, this elementary drawing helps to try to understand what it is and stay tuned. And we'll talk a little bit about diagnosis and treatment options. Cause again, it's not a one size fit all.